All right, Blake, you want to get into a little debate? <laughs> I'm always up for a great debate. Okay. So let's talk about when we set our daily big three. We very squarely land on the two extremes, I think. Unless you've changed it up. Have you changed? I, see, I don't know. See, it, it change, it, it's changed a little bit. But most often, I'm setting my daily big three in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I ideally always set mine as part of my work day shut down at the end of my work day for the next day. And so in this episode, we're going to talk about why I'm right and Courtney is wrong. <laughs> is, that, is that the purpose of this episode? Actually, that's not <laughs> the purpose of this episode. But um, I think the point here is it really, all jokes aside, it doesn't actually matter when you set your daily big three. It actually just matters that you set your daily big three. I would even say, even if you or somebody that does it in the morning and you get to lunch and you realize like, oh, I didn't set my deadly big three, that you stop then and say, okay, let me set my daily big three for, you know, for the time I have remaining, let me be clear on what's the most important thing to get done. You're exactly right. It's more important that you do it. When is the right time to be clear on your mm -hmm. biggest priorities for the day? There's never a bad time. But some of you listening are struggling to set it each day on a consistent basis. And if that's the case, you want to look at when you're choosing to set it so that you can get that habit going and, and get in rhythm. Yeah. So we're going to look at three different options for when you can set your daily big three, including your morning ritual, your workday startup ritual, and workday shutdown ritual. And we will uh, discuss some pros and cons let you think about it, and then you can make the choice of what will work best for you. Welcome to another episode of Focus on This. This is the most productive podcast on the internet, so you can banish distractions, get the right stuff done, and finally start loving Mondays. I'm Courtney Baker here with Blake Stratton. <laughs> Okay, guys, happy I just Monday, want you to Courtney. know, happy Monday for the audio. Blake's new dance move is just pointing at the screen and doing a little bebop. Well, I like to imagine, you know, it's I'm coming out on stage and, you know, the talk show hosts, they're always like, you know, they point to someone in the audience that like they yeah, know they're them. Yeah, they're like waving. They don't like know they them. Like they know them they're really waving. close. Yeah. Oh, you stop. <laughs> right. They do one of those. <laughs> okay. So let's okay. jump right into it. What's our first option for setting our daily big three? Let's skip right to the best one, which is the work day shutdown ritual. <laughs> I got really confused because it's not in order in our script, but I wanted to go to the one that I did, which was the very okay, last one. Okay, well, let's start there. Let's start there. The work day shutdown ritual as option number one, mm -hmm. per the request of Courtney. Uh, so we'll save the best for last, which is mine, the work day startup. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually, to be honest, I love setting a daily big three in the workday shutdown ritual. And I'll go over some of those pros right now. I'm, I'm going to do this for you, Courtney. I'm going to make the argument for you. I, I know. I'm like, you're going to make me Then I'm going to make you argue why it's not so great. We're going to neutralize <laughs> okay, each other's doing. arguments. I respect <laughs> that move. Okay. So when we do this, we're less likely to overestimate how much we can do because we're tired. We're, we are setting our daily big three for the next day uh, after having just completed a work day. So we are very familiar. <laughs> the optimism, I guess, uh, is dialed back to a healthy degree for what is realistic to actually get done. You know, we're big fans of taking risks, setting risky goals. Not a big fan of setting risky big three. You should be skeptical and realistic about that because things take longer than they take interruptions are bound to happen. The other thing, the other big pro, and this is why I, I love setting the big three as a workday shutdown yes. is that you can uh, close those last remaining open loops. So if you're looking at your day, what got done and what's still not done, and then looking ahead at the next week or the, the next few days of the week, you can answer the question, well, how am I going to get this done? And by setting tomorrow's daily big three, there's a sense of I'm really able to unplug now for the evening because I've already determined what will the priorities be tomorrow. 
And that, whenever I've done this, that's been the biggest benefit is the feeling of closure. Those open loops, finally having some closure, uh, even if you didn't get everything done that you wanted to. Is there any other pros that I'm missing here, Courtney, that you find benefit of? One is just you are, I find that I'm really connected to the work still for the day. And so I'm less likely to forget something, you know, the next day. I'm not having to try to remember something and get it um, down for the next day. So I would say that's the biggest thing is like my brain is already fully, it's like, I'm not warming up for a workout. It's like, I have just done the workout. I know what it feels like. My brain, my body's still warm from the day and can figure out what's best for me to tackle the next day. Okay. I'm going to go on to the cons because Mm -hmm. you are very smart in this discussion. So (laughs) cons, I want to say this first one is probably especially true for folks that maybe have an international team or they, you know, work in a company where there's not, you know, really hard boundary. You know, people work through the evening or work at night. So one of the cons is priorities might change during the evening. You know, it's like you wake up that next day and get to the office and realize, well, what I thought you know, 12 hours ago is not actually relevant anymore. Another con is we might fail to review tomorrow's big three when we get in for the day. You know, we just start plowing into work and don't take the time to look at what we determined was the daily big three for the day. Um, And then it can feel awkward to set when today's not totally over. So you're kind of setting your daily big three. Really, you still got quite a bit of time left in the current day before um, it's over. So those are the cons. I think those are weak cons, you know? I mean, (laughs) that's really, really we had a stretch for those, you know? Are you ready to move on to... The option that neither of us do, but, you know, let's let's make this a fair discussion and let's talk about setting your daily big three as part of your morning ritual, setting your daily big three as part of your morning ritual. I will say, I believe that our CEO, Megan Hyatt Miller, sets her daily big three as part of her morning ritual. So just to give some cred to this option. Okay, great. So I'll tread lightly when I just plow through the cons on this one. That's, yes. what I'm, that's what I'm understanding. I'm just kidding. Uh, one of the pros, now I haven't talked to Megan about this, but uh, when you're doing your morning ritual, inherently, that means my workday hasn't begun yet. That's how we're distinguishing morning ritual versus workday startup ritual. So setting a daily big three in the morning before work begins, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is is when you get into work or work mode, and I'll admit this as someone that typically will set that big three as part of the workday startup. Sometimes things come at you, especially if you go to a physical office, which I don't anymore. But if you get to the office, someone comes up to you or you have a meeting first thing at the office. Uh, the morning ritual is the easiest ritual to keep consistently. And I think that's why it gets so much love is the the workday startup ritual can be hard to keep consistently depending on what your work life is like in the workday shutdown. Similarly, the morning ritual, you're always going to wake up. (laughs) You're always going to (laughs) wake up. And usually you have enough time to brush your teeth and whatever. So I think the consistency here is one of the biggest pros of being able to consistently set your your daily big three because you consistently do the morning ritual. Uh, Another pro is that because you're not in the work environment, you're, you might be more likely to include non-work tasks as part of your big three, which if you've been struggling to make time for your personal goals, that could be very valuable. So uh, those are a couple of the pros that come to mind. Uh, I think it, it might feel very grounding for you as a way to start your day to feel confident or energized. Uh, I'm sure that's a benefit as well. But Courtney, what would be some of the cons? Well, I would like to propose on the flip side, yes, you do always wake up, but if you are prone to oversleeping or having a (laughs) young child get out of bed before they normally do, you know, this Ah, might get compromised. Um, So it also 
You know, if you have to have a cup of coffee before your brain is really in gear, um, this may not be the best time for you to set your daily big three. Also, one of the other potential cons is at this time of day, you might, it's the opposite of the work day shut down. You're not tired. You're fresh. And you may overestimate what you can actually accomplish. So those are the things to think about when you're considering doing your daily big three during your morning ritual. It brings us to our third option. Set your daily big three during your workday startup ritual. So Courtney, I know you're a big fan of this. Tell me all the pros <laughs> of setting your daily big three here. Let me tell you. Okay, so first, you're pretty focused to get your day started. You know, you're you're ready to go. You're focused. Um, it's natural at that point in the day to consult your calendar. And so you will have in mind what is going to happen um, for the day. So when you set your big three for the day, it's more realistic. You know, if you're in all day meetings, um, you're going to keep that in mind when you're setting your daily big three. This also helps you switch into work mode, you know, when you sit down to set your daily big three. Well said, Courtney. Those those are some pretty uh -huh. compelling uh -huh. Uh -huh. reasons yeah. uh, to do that. <laughs> what, what, you know, I know we mentioned this as a con for the workday shutdown, but uh, the biggest thing for me is that things do change, not infrequently, priority wise, after I'm done with my workday and before the next workday begins. Uh, I have clients that live in different time zones. I have mm -hmm. people can, you know, meetings can be scheduled on my calendar and that's a good thing uh, in, in my line of work typically. And so that change is important. I like to know that I feel confident that this is my daily big three. Um, but that being said, I'll, I'll, I will voice I, I the workday like should. To you know, pose that in this debate, I didn't get any rebuttal on mine. And, and I, I see that you've slipped that in. Um, and so I would like to take the cons here. I, I'm going to come strong with the cons here for okay. workday startup ritual. Okay? okay. First of all, it might get skipped because one of the things that might have changed over the night is somebody schedules a meeting during your time mm. block of when you do your workday startup. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's also more likely to be explicitly work focused. You mm -hmm. are in work mode. And so it's easy to fall into the trap of just making those three things um, professionally driven. Uh, you also might get distracted by morning office chat. This is probably more applicable if you're going into the office, but you know, you gotta, if you're getting a cup of coffee, then you spend 10 minutes, you know, chatting about, you know, that really awesome show last night or that great podcast you just listened to. And then there goes your time to kind of set your daily big three. Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. Okay, I mean, so all joking aside, I feel like we have laid out a really strong argument for all the options. Wait a minute. Wait. Why didn't we talk about the what? other what? spot? I feel like I need to advocate oh. for an evening ritual time. I just want to say that that's basically... Okay, um, so you're, you're about to advocate for setting your daily big three during your evening ritual. For the next day. Okay, I've got to hear this. Okay. Which... <laughs> well, it's similar to the workday. <laughs> it's similar to the workday shutdown, except that you have actually lived the rest of your day, right? So now, at your, as you get ready to go to sleep, you've got. I've already accounted for all the stuff that's happened today. I'm ready for tomorrow. I sort of switch between those two: a workday shutdown and an evening ritual when I do it, depending on how busy I am. But I do find that it's a, it's a real spot that people could use. So I feel like we just needed to give voice to that idea. Yeah, I think that that is fair. And I certainly think if it works for you, do it. Um, we normally don't recommend that. But I think this is a great opportunity to have that discussion in our community. Like mm -hmm. who I feel like they're probably Nick, they these folks probably still fall into that camp of like, hey, at nighttime, my brain is fully functioning. Like, 
you know, I, it takes me a while to wind down. I'm in that, like, my brain is toast. You know, I can't, <laughs> yep. I can't think work. I'm done with work. So I think let's talk about it in the community, especially if you are someone that likes to set your daily big three during the evening ritual. Let's, let's hear it. Okay. I do think as, as an advocate for both of those, I, I make a practice of this and I encourage when you do a workday shutdown or evening ritual to at least consider, even if you don't set daily big three, what do I want to focus on tomorrow or what, what should my priorities be to have some general sense of that? I do think is positive. This is my two cents. I do think that's great advice. All right. So today, Courtney, I thought it might be fun to take a minute. I think of you as somebody who is so put together, so on top of their stuff. I'm like some sort of like sludge creature <laughs> crawling oh around. <laughs> Not making true. sense, Not true at all. Uh, just trying to make sense of the world that is uh, too advanced to understand. But I thought we might take a second to actually talk about your uh, daily morning ritual, like with some specificity. Part of that is because um, I don't know if I've said this in the podcast. I have a a, a little wee a little wee baby coming, and so um, <laughs> you know I also have a thirteen year old, and so we've gone through. A whole bunch of steps there, but now I feel like I'm yeah. in two very different worlds. So I just going, you've had two children in the last however many years. You've been through however many morning rituals. And so I thought maybe we could talk about that for me. I love talking about this. I will say I had a realization somewhere along the way, because I think once I had small children, my thought was, okay, how do I sleep as late as possible and still try to get everything done kind of simultaneously? Hmm. And it just didn't work. I had okay. this moment <laughs> where it was like, I this is chaos and it's miserable. And every morning feels like I feel hmm. frantic trying to accomplish everything that needs to get accomplished in this time period. And because like, really, I, you know, wanted it to be like the sweet time that our family got to, you know, eat breakfast and, you know. I remember I'm like, having very specific, mm -hmm. me like memories of you talking about this vision for this yeah. time. I don't know. Yeah. Did that not work out? <laughs> no, well, I had a realization that I was like, what has to be possible for like the time mm. once my girls get up till I leave for that to be a pleasant time what has to be true hmm. and i was like i have got to be totally ready for the day before they get up now okay. this is just me so this is to explain a little bit about my morning ritual the goal is before 7 a.m when the girls get up that i I'm totally ready. I say that just because with a new child, you may find yourself still trying to do the things that you normally would have done and just like add on top of that a child in the mix. And I would say just be mindful that that may not be successful. <laughs> okay. Or it may it may be just frantic. And if you're okay with frantic, um, that's okay too. You know, I, we always talk about your rituals of – it has to work for you. And so, but for me, I was like, I have got to be ready for the day, which meant it impacted everything about my ritual and my morning ritual, but also my evening ritual. This is right. why I have to go to bed like at a decent time because my ritual, you know, starts at 5 a.m. to get up and work out. So uh. I know. <laughs> shed the tears when i was a teacher or when i was going into student teaching i had a friend tell me he goes you know you'll you'll adjust to getting up early right you gotta be at you gotta be at school whatever but it will take you a very long time to adjust to going to bed earlier and i still yeah. to this day struggle with it and so much of that is connected to like when your kids go to bed and so when you and your partner or by yourself get just like a second and so you're going like, finally, it's the end of the day. I have a chance to just like sit I in know. silence and stare at the wall. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's hard to put yourself to bed at that point. Um, but I, I know that's it probably is, has to, has it to is change. so true. And I literally set 
all of our Alexas to go off to tell me to go to bed, mm-hmm. especially during that season, because you, you almost have to determine that you're going to be up multiple times during the night. Just like if you go into it, like, okay, I'm going to have to wake up three times tonight. So I got to go to sleep. <laughs> but so if wait, you go, into you go to it, bed at, yeah. you go to bed at nine thirty nine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At nine. I mean, I'm like in bed at nine. I, I know, know that like and I, Megan and Michael also do that. You and I are different in this way that I'm like much more of a morning person and you're much more of a night owl, but you also have the advantage that you are a man and you probably don't need as much time to get ready for the day. You know, I don't even shave every day. When I meet other men who like shave every day, I go like, what's that like? Isn't that time consuming? Isn't that like hard on your skin? Uh, So you're right. No, it does not take me very long to get ready. Uh, But let's quickly hear like, Mm -hmm. what is the routine? You wake up at five. Yeah. So I work out basically that first hour, you know, is dedicated to working out. And then the second hour is all related to me getting ready for the day. You know, it's actually getting ready and taking a shower and getting dressed. And, you know, if I want to sit and have a minute to read or um, sometimes I listen to a like meditation app. So it's kind of, mine is not at this point as many morning rituals as I've done over the years is not as regimented as Mm -hmm. it once was. And I think that's pretty natural for folks that have done this for a long period of time. I kind of know what the blocks are and what's available to me. And so Mm -hmm. if it's a day where I'm going to have to do some front stage things and it's going to just take me longer to get ready because... You know, your hair has to be, you know, all the things. So I may not have that time to slot that in where there are other days I may be working from home and I'm throwing on joggers and a t-shirt and a hat and, you know, can, you know, slot in some other things that that would be helpful that are part of my ritual repertoire. Did I say that word right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it sounds the... weird coming out of my mouth. So the like the central choice, uh, which I really like as a, as a decision. I'm not saying it's going to happen for me. I don't know yet, but to go, I need to be ready before these kids need my attention. I think it's very common yeah. to. I think by default we don't do that. If you think through every like sitcom you've ever seen of a family, the mornings are like, hey, you know, mom and dad are. Mm-hmm someone's making breakfast and someone's like making sure the backpacks packed and someone, you know, and they're rushing the kid. So it's all, it's not quite the same, you know, someone's yeah. taking a shower. So I, I do really like that choice. You know, I, I'm not under the illusion. So please don't go on Facebook that uh, the first five, six months are going to be anything that I can plan really. Uh, <laughs> but after that point, I feel like trying to get on a, on a routine would be, would be the win so i I just i had to ask the best yeah i think you almost need to treat it like your ideal week in those early months of like okay this is for my morning ritual this would be the ideal but i realize we are working with a very fluid situation and so it may (laughs) not always be exactly like this um i will say so basically those first two hours are like mine and then once you cross the bridge it becomes, okay, what, how do I do the things well to support and love and be with the people that I want to spend time with before I'm leaving for the day? And so, you know, that's obviously things like making breakfast, you know, it's it's not rocket sure. science, but you can also be really strategic about that time. You know, I think we as a culture are pretty intentional about dinner time. But that's a really sweet mm-hmm. time in the moment. If you're ready and can be intentional, it's a it's a nice little sliver of time to be present with your family. Well, anyway, I, I'll keep everybody updated as to as to how it goes. You know, we have we're really like intentionally in these next few months, like go, going through our processes. Right. If you remember, my goal right after I had uh, my youngest Ellis was to create 
basically the rituals and like how our household was going to run um, and get those installed, you know, that first, you know, those first few months after she was born. And obviously the work you're already doing is really helpful. I will leave you with one word of wisdom. And I think this is for everyone out there uh, to have grace with yourself because mm. You're gonna, you're gonna need it. So, <laughs> well, thanks for thanks for sharing your your valuable insights. I don't know if they're really that valuable or just really fresh. <laughs> All right, I've got today's tip to level up your focus. If setting the daily big three has been a struggle, try setting them at a new time today. It is an experiment, and I would recommend just choose one and stick with it for a week or two, and you can always try another time to see what works best for you. If you're not sure how to go about setting or resetting one of your daily rituals, particularly to include your daily big three, we have a free download to help you do this. You can go to fullfocus.co slash build hyphen rituals to download a build your own ritual kit. It's a fantastic tool. Thanks for joining us on Focus on This. This is the most productive podcast on the internet. So share it with your friends and don't forget to join our full focus planner community to tell us who's right on today's episode. We'll be back next Monday with another great episode. Until then, stay Stay focused. focused. Yay, we did it.